Hi friends, let's discuss some of the question and answer from Biographia Literaria. First one is, what according to Coleridge is the difference between fancy and primary imagination? According to Coleridge, primary imagination is something which enables us to perceive world around us. It is common to all human beings while fancy for Coleridge is a mechanical and logical faculty which poet which make poets a poet to choose the metaphor simile and other poetic device so next one is how is primary imagination different from secondary imagination primary imagination is merely the power of receiving impression of the external world through the senses the power of perceiving the objects of sense both in their parts and as a whole it is a spontaneous act of the mind the human mind receives impressions and sensations from the outside world unconsciously and involuntarily imposes some sort of order on those impressions and reduces them to shape and size so that the mind is able to form a clear image of the outside world in this way clear and coherent perception becomes possible the secondary imagination may be possessed by others but also but it is the peculiar and typical trait of the artist it is the secondary imagination which makes artist creation possible Secondary imagination is more active and conscious. It requires an effort of the will. Volition and conscious effort. It works upon its raw material that are the sensation and impression supplied to it by the primary imagination. By an effort of the will and the intellect, the secondary imagination select selects and orders the raw material and reshapes and remote remote it objects of uh, beauty it is assemptic assemblastic that is shape and modifying power its plastic stress reshapes objects and external world and steeps them with a glory and and drop that never was on sea and land it is an active agent which dissolves diffuses dissipates in order to create third one what is coleridge's idea of a good poet who among his contemporaries fit the bill best coleridge's idea of of a good poet can be understood from the following lines and that is the poet must be out of his mind create from according to the severe laws of the intellect in order to generate in himself the coordination of freedom and law the involution of obedience in the prescript and the prescript to to their impulse to obey which assimilates him to nature uh, and enables him to understand her he merely absents himself a season from her and his own spirit which was the same ground with nature may learn her unspoken language in main radicals before he approaches to her endless compositions of them so that's for today thanks